very good afternoon to everybody really thank uh, dr mohanty and the chairperson over here to give this opportunity to me uh, a lecture on interoperative fractures of uh, tbr during total knee arthroplasty uh, so the incidence is increasing because of the rise of number of total knee arthroplasty the every day more elderly are taken up uh, impact longevity also is a reason the most common periprosthetic fractures are most common are supracondylar tbr and later is patella is the third most commonest reason for undergoing a revision total knee arthroplasty intraoperative fractures of the total knee arthroplasty is a rare complication with a prevalence of 0.39 to 2.2 percent underestimated because of clin of clinically insignificant fractures that are usually missed male to female ratio is being around 0.34 to 1 Uh, risk factors of the patient related are uh, osteoporosis rheumatoid arthritis advancing age females chronic steroid use and severe varus or valgus deformity and uh, requiring constraint implants the stiff knee with range of motion at less than 90 degree are also a primitive factor for uh, these kind of fractures risk factors implant related posterior stabilized knee for the femur constraint implants and pin track positioning during computer navigated assisted to total knee arthroplasty pin tracks may be larger which can again act as a stress risers risk factors surgeon related to angular insertion or removal of the trial or the final implant definitely excessive hammering force so here is a very wonderful classification mayo classification for periprosthetic fractures of the tibia the type 1 which extends from the plateau to the involved to the prosthesis uh it in, it includes uh, both intra and post op fractures type a is uh, post op fracture with well fixed prosthesis type b is post op fractures in a loose prosthesis and type c is only intra operative fractures type 2 is adjacent to the tibial system to the metaphyseal diaphyseal junction whereas type 3 is distal to the tibial prosthesis type 4 is limited to the tibial tubercle and which is most dangerous types of implant and risk of intraoperative fractures is a larger tibial component base plate more than 3 this is probably due to larger tibial knee size which needs to be used poly size uh, in more than 13 has a lesser chances of fracture 9.6 uh, times are more likely to use semi constrained implants than those with ps knees uh, time of occurrence of fracture during surgery the tuber tubercle osteotomy done for the exposure increases the risk of tibial fractures large majority of tibial fractures during preparation of tibia and knee or impaction of the tibial component overzealous hammering of the final tibial component has been recognized a strong risk factor for the fracture location and characteristic of intraoperative fracture majority of studies have published in literature that states that intraoperative fractures are more common on the femoral side and less on the tibial side large majority of tibial fractures which occur intraoperative involve the tibial condyles without major displacement medial condyle is more often involved complex metaphyseal diaphyseal fractures are very rare so management options mayo type 1 and type 2 type 1 fractures involve the tibial condyles so undisplaced stable vertical fractures can be get away with a cc screw or a plate whereas a displaced unstable will require a stem tibial implant with cc screws type 2 or 3 will require a stem of a stem of the tibial component with or without plate if three cortices cortices are held achieve or hold as achieved properly so no plate is required and here is the example where there is a plate is also augmented with the intramedullary long stem type 4 is a typical uh, tibial tubercle which is a disaster minimal displace can get away with the brace in extension where displace will require tbw with a semi t or a allograft here is the case uh, illustration of a 60 year old male severe oa patient developed a displaced type 3 mayo fracture the ideal okay. treatment would be long stem or a, or a, a stem implant or a long stem with a plate but this was done so this is the x ray at 3 months a uh, long locking plate mipo was done after 6 months this is the x ray of the fixation which was later revised to a tibial component with stems no graft but the available bone was used as grafts 6 months everything healed well walking without stick no pain and the range of motion was about 110 degree so what about prevention careful and pre operative planning in patients with recognizable risk factors steps to take and improve the bone mineral density 
Stem component CC screw plate should be available as a backup while performing a total knee arthroplasty with known risk factors. Gender risk uh, joint exposure in patients with severe deformity. Bone preparation, trialing and final component placement mismatch between bone cuts taken for the final component solution should be avoided. Over stuffing of the tibia with cement and over zealous hammering during the final sitting of the tibial component should be avoided. Thank you.